Let's talk about a really easy way to add a hotbar to a Godot game with just one node. If you have predetermined abilities, guns, or in this case, blocks to switch between, this won't take you more than a couple minutes to set up. This video is part of a beginner crash course series where we make Minecraft. Although you don't have to see the whole thing to understand this, a link to the whole playlist will be in the description. So let's get right into this. To make a hotbar, we're going to need 2D images of whatever we want to be on there. In our case, we have 3D meshes for the blocks that we just need to convert to 2D images. And there's a bit of a convoluted way to do this in Engine. We created a mesh library of all the blocks in a previous video and if we open it up in the inspector from the grid map or from the file system it lists all of the items that we have in it. These items also have preview images generated by Godot which we can just save in our file system. But if we click on this drop down and select save as, Godot is going to tell us that we need to make this resource unique first. So let's go ahead and do that. Click on the drop down again and select make unique and then we can go ahead and save it. We're going to create a new folder called icons inside of our resources folder. Then rename the file to match our block and on the right hand side change the file format to PNG. With the icon saved we're going to repeat the same process for a couple of other blocks that the player should be able to place. After that when we open up the icons folder we should have all of our files in there so let's get on to adding the hotbar. We're going to switch to the player scene and add a node called item list as a child of the player. What it does is it gives you a list of selectable items and you can add an image and some text for each item. The items are arranged vertically by default so we're going to have to increase the number of columns to get this to look like a hotbar. Then we can go into the items section and click add element four times to add four items. And each of the text fields will write numbers one to four to match our keyboard shortcuts and then we can go ahead and drag our icon files into the corresponding icon fields. This will add our images to the item list next to the text that we typed earlier. Now let's go ahead and resize the hotbar so it matches the size of the icons. Let's zoom out to see the whole screen and reposition the item list so that it's at the bottom. To do that, select the item list in the scene tree, click on the anchor preset drop down and select the bottom center one. This will place our hotbar in that position regardless of what resolution the game is played at, but we can also take it a step further and give the hotbar an offset from the bottom of the screen by going into its layout transform settings and subtracting 10 from its vertical position. So that's going to add a little space between the bottom of the screen and the hotbar and the cool thing is that it's going to stay there regardless whether we play it in 1440p, 1080p or whatever else p. PP. So now let's go ahead and rename the item list to hotbar and code its functionality in the player script. First we control drag the hotbar into the code to create a variable for it and then create a variable for the block that we have selected. If you remember from the first video, the blocks have indices inside of the grid map, so this variable will be responsible for tracking which block we currently want to place. Index 6, which is the wood planks, will be our default. So then if we go down to the spot where we are placing our blocks after right click, we are currently just passing the index of the wood planks to the grid map. What we want to do instead is pass the index of our currently selected block. So now let's add a section to our code to handle number key presses, but first we have to create actions for them that we can check for. So go into the project settings input map and add actions called 1, 2, 3, and 4. Then we're going to bind them to their respective keys by first clicking on the plus sign next to the action and then pressing the key that we want to bind on the keyboard. Now back to the code. In the block selection section, we'll check if we just press the one key action, which is our wood planks, so we will change the selected index to six. We also need to tell our item list to highlight the selected item, so we will call the select function on the hotbar and pass it index zero because that's the first item on the list. Then let's copy paste this bit three times because we just need to switch around the actions we're checking for and indices we're switching to. So when we press 2 on the keyboard, we want to switch to the wood log on the hotbar, 
which is index 5 on the grid map. The selected variable needs to match the grid map index, so it will be 5, and we'll pass index 1 to the select function to highlight the second item on the list. Key number 3 should select the dirt block for us, which has index 1 on the grid map, so that's our selected variable, and index 2 on the item list. Finally, number 4 is index 0 on the grid map, and index 3 on the item list. We also need to select an item on the hotbar by default, so we'll copy this hotbar select 0 bit, since what planks is our default block, and paste it into the ready function. Our hotbar should work now, so let's test it out. After placing some wood planks, we can press 2 and place some logs. Now we can make whatever our heart desires, as long as it's with these four blocks. The next step is to code a save game system so we don't lose whatever abominations we create. As a matter of fact, I already have a tutorial for that and it's available on my Patreon under the $10 tier. A link to that will be in the description. So let me know what you would like to see next in this series. I'm thinking about either adding some animal NPCs or doing an introduction tutorial on particles with some rain and maybe block breaking animations. Anyways, that's it for this one, so I'll see you in the next video.